Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today is a pleasant Sunday smoke. Thumbs. And on this pleasant Sunday smoke, I am smoking a little bit of Billy Bud by Cornell and Deal. I just, just now, recorded my review of Billy Bud. You may have seen my first impressions video last week on the channel. And, uh... My opinions changed a little bit. It's grown. It's evolved a little bit. I will say that if you like this blend and you want your opinion to be reinforced, you'll probably like my review. And I'll leave it at that. It has cigar leaf in it. I still have some of it in this pipe. It is my Eldritch Pipe Dr. Silence reading pipe. A lot of pipes going on there. I actually had someone ask if I would smoke this on this Sunday smoke. In fact, that was going to be part of my Ask Stuff and Things feedback. Uh, okay, well, we'll do this right now. This is from Ryan Wolf at Firewolf. He said, I know this is presumptuous, but I would like to know if you would use your Eldritch for this week's Sunday Spoke. Love the channel. Well, Ryan, yes. Yes, I will. But now, I don't want to start this precedent where people just start requesting me to smoke, requesting of me that I smoke certain pipes during certain Sunday smokes. It's weird how the rotation of the pipes works. Maybe it sometimes seems to some people that I'm always smoking one of a few pipes on the Sunday smoke, but I have, like I said, maybe 12, 13, 14 pipes that are always in my rotation. And I don't know, just mathematically, statistically, whatever, sometimes it just seems to hit on the same ones on certain days. I don't know, it's odd, but I wasn't neglecting this and it's still in my rotation. I still smoke it every week. It just hasn't been on a Sunday smoke for a while, I guess. Go figure. A lot of people have been very concerned about where my Peterson pipe lighter has been. It's here. I found it. Um, I didn't have butane for it for a long time, but it's okay. Just relax. It's still there. I still use my Bic sometimes too, or a lot of the times, most of the time. Um, they both work. They're both good. Now, we have things to discuss here. As I mentioned, we will get to Ask Stuff and Things later. Hashtag Ask Stuff and Things. But I guess I should also tell you, I'm using my Midori Traveler's Notebook Passport Size as my notes for this episode. Writing notes with my Caveco Brass Sport yet again. Like these both very much. I've done reviews of both of these products on the channel. But we have things written down and... The first one, anytime I talk about a subject like this, it there's the danger that it seems as though it's contrived. And maybe you'll understand why when I start talking about it. But occasionally there will be a comment or there will be a message or there will be a, there will be a thread or something where people are annoyed about ads on one of my videos. Um, that happened more on the Stuff and Things Plays channel because on there I try to do everything automated. So YouTube just automatically puts ads on the videos on that channel. Um, I don't put them in myself. And sometimes YouTube puts a lot of ads in each video. Usually those videos are longer, 30 to 40, 50, sometimes even an hour, um, minutes, hour minutes, 30 to 40 minutes, sometimes 50 minutes, sometimes even an hour. That was a sentence. But then sometimes they'll put like six or seven ad ads in one video. So I try to check that. Again, it's about efficiency, trying to get things going quickly. But with my Sunday smokes, with my pipe tobacco reviews, first impressions videos, other reviews, I usually do one video at the beginning and one in the middle of, the, or one ad in the beginning and one in the middle. And someone wrote recently how you know, they had seen an ad in the middle of the video and that's just making them lose interest in the channel and in watching the videos. And I replied to them. And so me bringing the subject up is not me trying to contrive some way of saying like, hey, ads really help me out, but they do. And I just wanna to explain to anyone who's watching who's annoyed by ads, I get it. Like, I, I understand that ads are annoying. Um, I wish that we didn't have to do them at all but for me, at least, I'm obviously not making a living off of YouTube, obviously, with my subscriber count, even though I appreciate every single one of you. I'd love it if more of you subscribed, if more of you shared the channel, thumbed up, liked, shared, all that, all this, all the stuff, the subscriptions and everything, notations, notifications, ring that bell. Um, anyway, 
Uh, I don't make a lot of money off of the channel, but the little bit of money that I do make, it does help to offset some of the costs of doing the channel. Um, some of the equipment that I use, and then also buying blends for review, other things like that. I buy a lot of pipe blends, especially, that I probably wouldn't get normally, um, because I don't, I don't like taking huge risks with pipe tobacco. Usually if I have several things that I know I like, I'm good. I'll stick with those and I'll smoke those, but I buy a lot of blends, I review a lot of blends, and the money that I make from ads helps with that. Um, so it's up to you. Like, I don't, I certainly won't blame anybody for being put off by the fact that there are ads on the channel, but if you enjoy the content and you want to see more, I hope that you'll keep in mind that it does help for me to have some ads on there and it does help offset. If, if my videos don't get demonetized, they still are, it seems to be happening a little less where some are still demonetized as soon as I post them and then it takes a day or two and then they will be remonetized. Some are fine right off the bat and I still can't figure out why because a lot of them have the same kinds of keywords and the same kind of content. I don't know, it's a mystery. But anyway, I just wanted to bring that up again because it seems like every few months someone will mention it and I, I understand the frustration with ads. I really do. When I'm watching YouTube content, I try not to skip ads a lot because I do understand just the fact that I have a YouTube channel myself that you make very little money off of each view um, or each ad impression and any little bit helps. And so I try not to skip, but you know, sometimes I do have to hit that skip button because sometimes it just gets a little, it's a little too much. And I understand that. Um, oh, recently, or I don't know, maybe a few weeks ago, I said that I was going to be doing a DNA test with Ancestry.com and I was waiting for my results. They have finally come in. I did not have time to do a video this weekend, but next weekend I'm going to be recording one. And it was pretty cool. Um, I understand, and some people left comments, and I totally understand this uh, this perspective where people are like, you should not have done that. The FBI can access those records. I understand that that's the case, and I actually did research on that before doing it, but I have very close family members who have also done these sorts of DNA tests, and that basically means that if I wanted to go on a murderous killing spree, I'd be screwed, because just them having close family members if I left any DNA on the crime on the crime scene and they took that and they checked it against like the Ancestry.com or the 23andMe database, if I had a close family member who had done their DNA test, which I do, they could see that I was that the DNA of the killer, me, was closely related to one of those people that was in that database, and then they would easily be able to find me. So I figured, what the hell? There are already several people. I have aunts, I have uncles, I have, I think, even a sibling who has done it. So I'm already screwed. My murderous spree will have to be uh, postponed, I guess. So anyway, I did it. I got my results. Um, I, I'm going to be recording a video of it. Uh, well, I recorded some of the video. I recorded the video of me actually looking at the results for the first time, but I want to do more with this video. I don't want it to just be about that because once I got the results, um, I was able to sort of plug that into a family tree that I had already kind of started on Ancestry and sort of connect to other people. There's this, it's kind of cool, it's kind of creepy, but it's kind of cool where you can sort of connect with other people who are related to you and then pull from their family trees and cross check that with other information that you have. And I was able to find some really cool pictures of some of my ancestors. I actually found the house that my great grandfather and grandmother on my dad's side lived in, in this town in like 1912, 1915 or something like that. So I went and I was like standing in front of the house and then the people in the house saw me and they wondered what I was doing and I was taking pictures of the house and they were getting paranoid and a guy came out and asked me to stop and I tried to explain what was happening and he thought I was weird and anyway, it was pretty cool. And I also found a picture of, now wait a minute, am I gonna get this wrong? I think my great, great grandfather also on my dad's side, but his mother's, I guess it was his mother's great-grandfather and great-grandmother 
uh, in Norway. He was a sea captain. Maybe as a little tease, I'll show you that picture now. You can see where I got my good looks from. Um, that's great, great grandfather Peter Kalberg. And uh, yeah, he was a sea captain in Norway. Pretty cool. Anyway, there's a lot of cool stuff like that. I found a really interesting letter. Um, it's pretty fun. Researching your history, researching where you came from, it may only be interesting to yourself. Uh, so I'm definitely in danger of boring all of you with this, but I find it endlessly fascinating. Other things. Um, the Star of the East Flake review is coming up eventually, but I think next weekend, as I mentioned, I'm going to be recording that DNA video, the whole like researching my ancestors video. And so this will be a couple weeks off. I hope you guys can resist the urge to freak out because I know a lot of you are desperately awaiting my, re or my verdict on Star of the East Flake. Um, and then also, in other news, I have started the Dark Souls Remastered played through. It was kind of weird because Dark Souls Remastered came out on May 25th, I believe. And I wanted to start playing it, but then I was also almost done with the Subnautica playthrough, or the Subnautica series on the Stuff and Things Plays channel. But I didn't want to not post any Dark Souls, so I posted one Dark Souls video, and then I posted the end of the Subnautica series. So I think that confused some people, but the Subnautica series is done now. If you want to watch that whole thing, it's complete. And then the Dark Souls series will continue this coming week, so Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I may even post more if I have the time to edit more. Um, I would like to get it just done, played through and done. I don't know if I'd be able to get five a week, but maybe three or four. We'll see. One other little bit of business or sort of behind the scenes info, I guess. The Sunday smokes seem to be getting longer and longer. I don't intend for that to happen, but by the time I've spoken about all the things that I wanted to speak about and then getting into the stuff and things or ask stuff and things section of the, the episode, they tend to drag on longer. A lot of people seem to like that. But one issue I have is the fact that my camera will only record about 20-ish minutes before it decides to end that file and start a new file. And you don't really lose anything, but what happens is I'll be in the middle of a sentence and 20 or so minutes happens, and then suddenly I will freeze and it picks up in the next video and there's this kind of weird cut and it's really hard to meld those two together and I think some of you have noticed some of those awkward cuts. So. What I am going to ask you as viewers of the Stuff and Things channel, would you rather I try to keep the Sunday smoke under 20 minutes? Would you prefer brevity? Or should I just try to think of a good place or, I don't know, look out for a good place while I'm recording to just stop, turn off the camera or stop the camera, end the file and start a new file? Um, would you rather I continue with the longer episodes or are you okay with the under 20 minute episodes? That is some feedback I would like from you. But now for feedback that we already have. Yes, it is that time of the show where you can ask me questions. If you go to Twitter, follow at SAT Bradley. That's number one. Once you have followed at SAT Bradley, that's me. You can tweet at SAT Bradley with the hashtag ask stuff and things all one word and ask me questions and i'll try to answer them on the show the first one is from male maloney he says <clears throat> can you help i'm brand new to english blends i usually smoke burleys i picked up a tin of mm965 and i'm loving it right at the beginning of the draw i get a, i get a quick bit of burning frankincense and myrrh I can't really roll my R's, so Scottish is hard. Like the incense used in Catholic and Greek Orthodox churches. It disappears almost immediately and I want more of it. Is this the lot of care? The Orientals? Can you suggest a blend with more of this? I feel like I'm chasing it in the 965. Um, frankincense and myrrh? I don't know if I know what frankincense or myrrh smell like. I mean, I obviously know frankincense and myrrh from 
the nativity story, but I don't think I've actually smelled frankincense and or myrrh. So if I tasted any in 965, I reviewed that on the channel, I probably wouldn't know. I might just think it was something that was kind of maybe incense-like or maybe spicy. So I don't know. I'm at a loss for this one. If anyone in the comments knows what frankincense and or myrrh smell like and or taste like, and they have tasted something similar in another blend. Well, first of all, did you taste that in 965? And if you did, did you taste that in anything else? Male Maloney would love some help. Okay, so this one is not gonna make a lot of sense because I can't show you the video that he's referring to, but he's basically saying that he's been trying a specific method of packing a pipe. And he linked a video to me and he just wondered if I had any opinion on that method. And the method is, Something I've seen before, it is called like the hand rolling method. Um, I've heard it called other things, but basically you put some tobacco in the palm of your hand, you take your pipe with the bowl facing that way, and you kind of roll it around on the tobacco like this. You don't necessarily have to move your head like this. Uh, you roll it around like that until the pipe is full. And he asked me if I had an opinion on it. I think I've tried it once or twice years ago. Um, seemed fine. It seemed maybe slightly similar to the results you get from the Frank method, um, but maybe not quite as good or not quite as consistent, I would say. And it is definitely something that you can pretty much only use with a ribbon cut. At least that's what it would seem like for me. But uh, whatever works. If you ever watch any old pipe tobacco commercials, you can find some on YouTube for like Condor Tobacco, brands like that. You will notice that, I don't have a tin with me, um, well, there's Billy Bud. You'll see people in those commercials, they will take a tin like so. They will take a pipe and they'll just kind of put it there and they'll just like, ugh, they'll just shove the tobacco in. There's no three pinch method. There's no Frank method. There's no, none of the uh, maybe fiddliness that we have introduced to the pipe smoking hobby because I guess back then it wasn't as much of a hobby as it was a habit for a lot of pipe smokers. And I think just, we like to make things complicated and I'm not saying that our methods are wrong or that they perhaps don't work better than just shoving tobacco into a pipe. But uh, I'm sure there are a lot of old dudes out there who still use the shove tobacco into pipe method and I'm sure it works fine for them too. Mm, ah, yes. Okay. The next one is from Justin Spanier and he says this, <clears throat> um, can you solve a Rubik's cube? The answer is yes. Yes, I can. Next question is from Paul Gann. He says, <clears throat> do you have any plans to do any more fountain pen videos in the near future? I came to your channel for the pipe content, but started watching the fountain pen stuff, and now I have another hobby. Hope to see more in the future. Thanks, Paul. Uh, maybe. You'll have to realize, and maybe some of you have already come to realize that my interests wax and wane, like the phases of the moon. Sometimes I'm really into something, and then I'll, I'll, I'll kind of pull away from it a little bit. It doesn't mean that I still don't enjoy it. I still use fountain pens all the time, but I will go through periods of acquiring things, and then periods where I kind of hold back and maybe just enjoy using those things. And so I am sure I'll get into another acquiring phase with fountain pens, and then I'll have more reviews and different things for, to show you guys on the channel. The next question from Brandon J. Nickel. He says, uh, did I already do this one? No. Okay. He says, what are some of the YouTube channels you are subscribed to? Sorry, I didn't do a voice. Uh, who am I subscribed to? Someone I've been watching a lot recently is Joe Robinette. He is a Canadian guy who lives in Ontario and he goes camping a lot. And I don't ever really go camping. I like camping. I don't mind camping. Um, but for some reason I enjoy his videos. He'll do really long 
you know, hour, hour and a half videos, sometimes kind of mini series where it'll be a multi-part video or video series where he takes really long trips. He's actually right in the middle of doing a 10 day solo excursion in the boreal forest way north in Canada where he's canoeing around, living on an island, and he only took ostensibly 10 items with him that he could use. Um, he had to fudge that a little bit because of camera equipment and all that stuff. But he's a, he's a pleasant guy and they're enjoyable videos. And if you like camping, or I guess bushcraft, things like that. You should check that out. Um, and then there are a lot of like gaming channels and things like that that I watch. Um, I'm trying to think of anything kind of off the beaten path. I guess, I mean, Joe, Ro Ro blah. Joe Robinette, Robinette is pretty popular. Um, so I don't think that's necessarily very obscure, but uh, yeah, that's what comes to mind right now. And then the last question from our good friend at FirePro 2 k 15 he says, Smoking pipes, work construction, playing video games, wearing various t-shirts, hats, in inf he says infinity, but I'm assuming he means an affinity, for notebooks, pens, knives, tats, and you use a French press, you're an onion with many layers, my friend. So what's something we'd be surprised to know about? Um, surprised to know about. I am completely immune to mosquito bites. Little bastards can bite me. They inject their little anticoagulant into me, and I have no histamine reaction to that whatsoever. Which probably means that my immune system sucks, but I don't think so because I don't get sick very often. Um, but that's what happens. That's why you get bumps and that's why you start itching is because they, they shoot their little anticoagulant through their proboscis into your skin. That makes the blood keep flowing. It doesn't scab up really quickly, and then they can drink and drink and drink like the greedy little bastards they are. And it's the reaction to that fluid that they inject into you, your body fights it because it's a foreign substance coming into your, into your body and that's why you get itchy, that's why you get bumpy. I get nothing. I get bit, bitten all over by mosquitoes all day long and I'll feel them biting me and I can see them biting me. And uh, occasionally I do that thing where you know you go and then you like, they'll pop off because you get the blood flow so crazy to them. Anyway, I don't get mosquito bites. That's exciting, at least I'm excited by it. And I don't know, I don't know what it's like to have a mosquito bite. I'm fine with that. I don't think I'm missing out at all. They're still annoying. I still don't like them buzzing around me. And I still don't like the idea of some evil little insect sucking my blood. But uh, the aftermath, not a big deal. Of course there's, you know, West Nile and what is it? Uh, African river blindness. And, and there are some diseases that you have to watch out for, but in terms of itchy bumps, I'm cool. There you go, gang. That's Ask Stuff and Things for this week, and that is also Sunday Smoke for this week. I'm gonna finish this pipe, I'm gonna edit this video, I'm gonna upload this video, I need to record some more Dark Souls videos, I need to edit those videos, I need to upload those videos, I need to do the descriptions and the thumbnails and all that other stuff. I need to answer some comments, I need to try to get back to some people on Twitter. So, I'm gonna leave now, I'm gonna leave you to this. This is the future, it's actually tomorrow. You're watching this now, and by the time you're watching this, I've already edited, I've already uploaded, I've already done the thumbnail, I've hopefully already answered some comments, I've done all that stuff. So I'm actually, hopefully, relaxing on a pleasant Sunday smoke, just like you are, as you relax and watch this video and maybe smoke your pipe or do whatever you do on a Sunday. But I hope you enjoy it. I'm just rambling and blathering and saying things. Words are just coming out of my mouth and I need to stop. So. Thank you so much for watching this week's Sunday Smoke. I've been your good friend Bradley. You've been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things on a Pleasant Sunday Smoke. I really just kind of trailed off there. I'll see you later. <laughs>